Hey guys, this is Eric Wanganer with Wanganer Racing. I'm back from vacation and back to kind of playing with this LS head. I want to show you some of the stuff I've done because I'm probably going to change it. It doesn't look ideal, I'll go ahead and tell you, just because, well, I got a wild thought and I was like, I want to try this real quick. And usually by the time I do these, I try to work on this head usually pretty late at night. Um, typically around like 11 o'clock just because I'm up to about 10 o'clock. Usually I'm working on customer stuff. So... The whole day and then in the night just customer stuff so this just is a back burner deal um it sounds like i if you look at the videos it looks like i'm working on it all the time but truthfully not just the end of the nights till i get um, too exhausted to be out here anymore but anyway point being is um i worked on this and i'm going to show you what i did here because it's going to make a little bit of sense this is the 55 degree port if you remember last time i shrunk up this port and i told you i was going to raise the roof on this 55 degree and that's what i've done just to recap for those that haven't watched the other videos, which is fine. I've tried different things as suggested by the internet. It's pretty much the internet. You give an idea, I'll try it on this head. And that's what I've been doing. Um, some of the ideas work, some don't. <coughs> Excuse me. Some I've also just done things because I wanted to experiment with. Like the 50 degree is more me doing stupid stuff. And it truly tr proved to be stupid. Um, but anyway, the rest of them pretty much are recommendations from um, the internet. Now, typically when I port the head, I do something a little different. I mean, well, I, I was going to make this exactly like, because several people had asked on the 50 degree if you could just do it the way you do it. And I did, but I really wanted to try something because I have never tried it and I'd rather ruin a head that's never going to get used and trying it on my own. That's why this one ended up being a turd. Um, I probably should have redo this one with the dimples and just pour it the way it, I normally would do, just to see how it compares. Uh, it'll probably get rid of most of the dimples if I do that. But anyway, let's see what's happened this time. We'll focus on this 55 degree. The thing that's been done already so far, just for those that don't know, is the bowl has been made bigger. If you look at the bowl, it's 104%. The throat's 92.1%, so pretty big. It's a 55 degree seat. Typically, you probably wouldn't run this anyway, but this is just experimentation. There's been nothing else done. The short side itself hasn't been touched. It looks like it has, but that's just from where I blended the throat around. I don't blend this area until I do the short side. So even that, is not even near close to being perfect. But the short side, for the most part, is untouched. Um, unlike the 50 degree one where it's been mowed down to nothing. So if we look at the port though, I wanna tell you what I did. This is the 55 degree port. So this is the way it comes stock and this is what you could tell what I've done. I've raised it up probably about 250 thousandths, um, maybe a little bit more, so a quarter of an inch, sorry about a quarter of an inch and I rounded it because it's going to end up being an oval. So it's got this shape here. Eventually I'm going to end up filling in the floor and make an oval too. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill in the floor. I have a feeling that's going to make a big difference and change some things. Um, for sure, as you can tell on the 45 small one, I've already done that. I haven't been to the store yet to get any more epoxy. I just got back from vacation. Otherwise I'd have that filled in and working better. Anyway, this will get filled in eventually but for now we're just playing for different things so what i did is i raised the roof and i didn't raise it all the way so um what i mean by that is it's really tall here but it's sloping down towards and hopefully you can see it there it's sloping towards the short side okay all righty um let me um stop the camera and i'll set it up so you can get a better view okay here's a better view just so you can get an idea i put a light underneath it um anyway you could tell it's it's sloped down that way because I haven't really worked the area of the short side. So yes, it's raised up here. And in case you're wondering what that little spot is there, I don't know if you can see it. It's this. This is the um, valve cover bolt hole. It broke through at the top. Now if you're like, well, doesn't that create an air leak? I have a bolt that goes through here that holds the valve opener. So it doesn't actually pull air through here. I also block off this hole for the rocker stud, just so you know. Anyway, that's how it looks. And all I did was raised the roof and then I also brought this, because the bowl was wider, if you went down here, the bowl was wider, I blended it in all the way out to here. This side has not been touched, obviously. And you can even see that there's a ridge I left intentionally at the top to leave this part lower and this part higher. And I float it. And I'm gonna show you the flow numbers, but I'll go ahead and save you some suspense in case you don't wanna see the actual numbers. This did absolutely nothing. I mean nothing. The numbers were within one or two CFM, which I'll show you. So you could say it was probably within the margin of error, but really I have to say that my bench is pretty accurate. It's very repeatable. So the point being though, is it didn't change enough to may say it did anything. 
So you would think by raising it a quarter inch, this is gonna have some huge gain, but it really did nothing. The next thing I'm gonna do um, is to start actually working on the short side a little bit. I am not gonna drop it down. That's what I made a mistake on the 50, as several of you know. I'm gonna leave it the same height as what I am, but I am because the bowl's still wide here. This side's been blended in, but this side hadn't. So I'm gonna push this side over to the apex. I'm gonna push it over as far as I can and roll it up and blend this in at the top, but not really raise it. So blend this and then push this wall out and maybe I'll lower this corner here too because I would like to have a slant where it slopes down this towards where my finger is on the short side. And then maybe I'll, that's where I'll probably stop. Eventually I'll try to see if I can't push this wall here where the push rod would be over as far as possible maybe, if you guys wanna see that. And then eventually what'll end up happening, assuming that gets correct, I'll start adding epoxy and make the height taller, but I will experiment with this one first because this one's already filled in, it's a 45 seat and it kind of gives me a direction where to go. So once I get an idea on that, I'll start filling this one in. And obviously this one's gonna end up being bigger and we'll see where we're at. The numbers on this one, so far the highest blowing port's this one, which it was before, it didn't change anything raising it up. But it was an experiment I got to see. You could see this, by the way, if you look at it, ooh, it's a cathedral. <laughs> No, it's a huge one. It's a pretty ridiculous. Also, I don't know of any intakes that fit this. However, when I was flowing, I was like, man, that's so weird. You know, I thought some kind of change would happen, especially because it was here. Now, granted, if you raise it up down there over the apex, I don't think you'd see much because the air actually dips down anyway. So raising the roof itself in this area is pretty much pointless, uh, with the exception of certain heads, not being this one. So I knew that if you moved it here, you're really not doing anything. You're making things kind of worse. But I would have thought being that I raised it so much here, it would help it move more air, give it a better path, a line of sight, and it would pick up something, which it didn't. But because it led me to that thought, I thought, let's revisit the 50 degree. And I'm gonna bring my light over so I can show you what I did. This looks horrible, but it was midnight. This 50 degree, as you can tell, the short side is definitely laid back and I can see almost the whole valve. But I thought, well, if this port didn't do anything by raising it up, what would happen if we kind of lower the roof in a way? So what I did is I added this huge blob of um, modeling clay and it doesn't look great. I, I really would rather have used epoxy, but I didn't have any. And I extended the vein on the um, valve as far this way as I could before I ran out of, of modeling clay. So in other words, essentially I filled in the roof area right over the apex of the short side because if you remember, I have dropped this down so much. So by moving this down, it should have gave it less area and maybe things will get better. That's the idea. It did change something. Matter of fact, this port now flows the highest at 400 and 500. Well, 400 for sure. I'm not sure about 500. For sure at 400 than any of the other ports ever have. Um, so that is kind of different, and especially with this big old glob, I wouldn't have thought that was possible. Now this is gonna get some other things, but because of this happening, it led me to trying that. Just letting you know. So anyway, um, I'm gonna get some modeling clay, because I've got to pull, I'm not, uh, epoxy, pull that out, make that all modeling clay, work this 45 short one. I'll end up filling in some corners, making a nice small oval here. Um, this one, Today, hopefully I will push it over like I told you. I don't have a clue what I'm gonna do yet on this. I'm probably gonna put epoxy in the floor and do the same thing, like an oval like this maybe, but something. Anyway, I'm open to suggestions of what you would like to see done on the head. Um, eventually what I'm probably gonna end up doing with this one that's all dimpled is I'm just gonna do it normal. So, and just pour it and see what it is, whatever it is it is compared to all the things we've tried. If you notice so far, just to give you an idea of what we haven't touched really is I still haven't, besides this 45, I really haven't touched the chamber. So eventually what's gonna end up happening is we're probably gonna run out of ideas on the intake ports, maybe, probably not. And eventually we're gonna have to tackle the elephant in the room, which is the chamber. So I'll probably end up getting an epoxy and filling in areas to make it work better. And we'll see what happens from there. But that's, you know, ways down the, ways down the road. So there's some of that, because this did help a little and also cutting down the guide helped a little. And that's not been done on the 50 or the 55 or any others. Now, here I'll show you that blob of epoxy or not, modeling clay I added to the vein. 
So let me get a light in here. You can see it, it's, it's not pretty. This is, I got five minutes. I don't want to wake my wife up when I go to bed tonight. Um, I just put this in real quick. Now I'm going to show you the flow of the results you can see, but this did have an impact and it looks like crap, and but it did have an impact. If I had an um, epoxy, which I'll eventually get, hopefully I can run in the store at some time and I'll make a much better looking design and reflow it and go from there. But that's time for many. This gets done pretty late at night, so probably ain't gonna happen tonight. But anyway, I thought I'd show you that. <sighs> Let me get you the numbers and show you the results and everything else. Okay, so what I've done now, just kind of show you, I didn't think I was gonna get to this, but I'll get to it. I pushed that this wall over like I just said, so you can kind of see. It looks like I dropped the top of the apex of the short side, but not really. What happens is, let me get a pointer. I should probably prepare better for these videos. Uh, when I'm grinding here, it will leave like a little notch here because I'm pushing the wall over. So I'll try to blend it to make it, otherwise you have like a dip here and then it comes up. So I'm just blending it in. I'll move the flashlight back just a bit. There we go. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, there. So as I'm pushing this wall over, it leaves a little dip from where your burr is. So I'm just blending this. I really didn't take off. It probably did take off some, but maybe 10,000 just to get it to where it doesn't have like a weird transition. I still haven't touched the short side and I can tell you it's pretty much straight up and needs to be come back from some. And also I think the short side height itself is too short for this port. And so having, we'll probably end up moving this and then having an epoxy to fill it. But um, you can kind of see what I've done. So move this over and kind of round to the top. And I will point this out. Um, those bulges, let me see if I can which I don't know if the camera's gonna capture without any light. Yeah, I'll just go over this one. You see that bulge right there? Which I don't know, the lightning's probably not the best. That's because of the spring pocket. I got rid of the, the bulge on the roof just because I was trying to blend this in and I wanted it perfect. And what it does is, see right there. See that little blister? It's breaking through. This head's not gonna be used. I know some people don't watch all the videos. This is never going to live engine. This would be a pain to fix, by the way, because you'd end up welding all of this and then you'd have to machine this back to the spring pocket. The guide probably moved. It'd be a pain. But anyway, um, that's getting filled in. So if you ever are porting these, don't take out that lump on the top, you'll break through. I don't even know if it helps, but I was like, well, I don't want to leave it. I want this thing to be perfect. Um, at least blend it as best I can to see what's going to happen. Um, ideally, if I was them, I'd say, hey, Flowtech, could you raise up the spring pocket, maybe a hundred thousands, and then you could eliminate that lump in there. Now, granted, you would have to run a taller valve, which may mess up some of your valve train stuff because there's a, everything affects something else. But it, I think it would probably help. But anyway, uh, let's try this on a flow bench, see what it does, and go from there. Okay, here are the results. This is the 55 degree seat one, and this is where I raised up the runner. So this was before I raised it up. And it again, ignore the 100. I've told that before, but it's because of the valves being sucked open. But at 200, it's um, it's right where it should be. So from 200 on, it's accurate. So the only thing difference between this one, which is where we left off before, to this one is it's raised up about a quarter of an inch and it's got a radius at the top. You can tell the numbers really don't change much. So we look at 200, it's slightly better, but it's not enough to make a difference. Exact same at three and pretty close, like a half a CFM difference at four. At five, it, it's up maybe two CFM, so not really much of a change. Six, it's pretty close to the same. Seven, it's actually down a few CFM, but not in a ton. Uh, eight, pretty much the same. Nine, the same, and even one the same. So raising that whole port up, doing all that, it didn't gain anything. It pretty much left it exactly like it was. So it did kind of prove out the point that raising the runner itself like that isn't the best idea. There's other stuff you got to do that probably would be a better idea. Uh, but because of that, of course, I told you I did the 50 degree and I decided to see what that would do. And I'm going to show you that one. So this is the 50 degree they got um, port. Um, this is the one where I laid it back too much. This is before I laid it back. This is laying it back. So I've now destroyed it. And this is adding that modeling clay that you saw. And the modeling clay looked horrible and it would look like it would hurt flow, but let's look at the difference here. Again, ignoring one. It's slightly better at two. It's noticeably better at three. And almost nine CFM better at four. So that's a pretty good gain. 
and then 4 CFM get better at 5. It's slightly lower at 6. It's slightly above at 7. About the same at 8. Uh, 3 CFM worse at 9. And at 1 inch, about 3 CFM difference. So even though, um, for the most part, it's better, even though it looks horrible and it took up space, it actually helped it somewhat. And that was a pretty good strong number there. This at the time was the highest number I'd had at 400 lift. But... I'm about to show you something that's gonna shock you. What you just saw of my videos is I moved over that one part of the port on the 55 degree seat. This one's the game changer. And I'm not done with it, by the way, but you'll see, it's pretty amazing. Da -da 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 -da. Bam. This is the 55 degree port. This is me just raising up the roof. Like I showed you, this is pushing the other wall over. So I haven't even touched the short side besides like what I showed you in there. It's pretty much what it is. It's not even near where it should be. So if we look at the results, ignore one. Down slightly at two. At three, it's the same. Four, look at this. 259 to a 274. That was the highest. This is the highest, 274 CFM. That is, wow, from a 55 degree seat. It then also gains at five, so now at the 317. Here's six, 353. And there, this is the first time where I've had a port that would hold on at 700 and it moved up. Now it still drops back if you look at eight, but 375 CFM at 700 lift. That's pretty good, pretty good. It drops to 362, which is the least drop that any of them had. At nine, 378, and yes, you, you are seeing that correctly. I voted three times to confirm. 386 CFM, 2.165 valve still, right there. That is, and it's not even close to being finished. So probably what's gonna happen next with this port is I'll actually work the short side a little bit, and maybe these numbers will come up a bit more. It could go down, but um, I'm just gonna do some slight things and see what happens. And then I'm gonna start filling in the port uh, to make it smaller and hopefully keep this flow the same, maybe. Unless you guys got other suggestions, I'd be happy for that, but that's a good number. And I was looking back through um, all the LS3 heads I've tested. I've tested some from Mast, Frankenstein, um, a ton, and none of them have hit 386. The highest one that I've seen actually came from Frankenstein, and I believe it was in 381. So that's still, a, and that's at peak. So, um, and I'm not, this is not something to brag about at all, because even as this is, this is not a usable port. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, that's a strong number. It is a strong number. Yeah, unusable, of course, so it makes it almost pointless, but I mean, I guess if you're chasing flow numbers. But it's something, it's something to see and play with. So that's what we're doing. Anyway, um, yeah, it's kind of neat. We'll uh, go from there. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.